Today, we are going to be talking about list building, the why, how, and what, most importantly for business owners. Um, so let's kick it off, Kev. Uh, let's, let's talk about list building 101. All right, man. Thanks for the intro there. Uh, this is episode seven. So uh, basically, we should have talked about list building in episode one, because list building is probably the most commonly overlooked thing in any any agency, 100%, but in, in most businesses. Uh, it's one of those things that tends to be an afterthought. But in reality, you know, like, what, what's the saying? The the money's in the list or the, the freedom is in the list. They, there's a bunch of those kind of analogies that you hear from all the biggest people and basically all of the industries uh, because a list is important. A list is something that you own. A, a list is something that you don't have to pay for every time you want to do it. You can drop a, an email to your list if it's got a thousand people on it, 10,000 people, 100,000. And basically that's always going to result in money. You spend an hour or two writing that email, writing that message, writing whatever your point of contact is. And in all reality, it could return, you know, 20 to a hundred thousand dollars worth of revenue, depending on what product that you actually sell. Um, so it's an easy way to connect with somebody. It's a way to express your feelings. And most importantly, it is an asset. Um, Tom, do you want to kind of get into a little bit of that for us? Uh, specifically, like, why, why is an email list an asset for most businesses? And why is it so often overlooked? Yeah, I think that's a great um, starting point. I think, yeah, even in regards to just a list, not even just an email list, but just a a database of potential customers or clients for your business, right? So for example, when I was in the real estate world, um, as a licensed realtor, the only way I'd make money was with it, it was when someone either bought or sold a house, right? So my potential clients or customers are people that own homes in a certain area that I work or people that were looking to buy homes in a certain area that I worked, right? My area specialty, whatever, right? So if you think about it from that standpoint, why is it important? You want to know who you're talking to, but then you also want to know who are the people in a certain area or in the world um, are potential customers of yours, right? So whether that be an email or mailing address, just for the sake of the um, the real estate example, um, or and or phone numbers, it's important to know who you're talking to and how big of a market that is, because that's literally, that's your money list. Right, those are the people you're talking to about your goods and services that you um, that will potentially you know utilize you and work with you for those things. Um, why is the, it important? Go ahead, sir. And by the time somebody's on your list, generally they're already down like the the no like trust uh, journey. Basically, by them saying I want to be on your list, if if you're getting them to sign up for a newsletter or something like that, or perhaps they've already done business with you, they literally already trust you at this point. There's nobody to trust you more than the guy saying, hey, teach me something. Oh, you are the expert in this? All right, let me hop on your mailing list so that you can give me like 12 emails over the next two weeks about that same topic, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it is a real good thing. And it's also um, one of the things that has really kind of shown itself to me over the years is that when people are on a list for a specific purpose, that is like all of their friends are also your ideal customers, you know? So in the realtor example, you may know one person who lives in this area, but all of their neighbors also live in this neighborhood, right? So if you do a really good job, if you show up, if you get it to where, you know, basically you're demonstrating that you're a, a workhorse, that you're, a, you know, just like a, a fountain of of productivity, of of just like, if you can help them, they're going to spread your word to their friends. So like, it's not only the people on your list, it's also the people on their lists, which is something that often gets overlooked. But this is kind of a, a situation for a lot of businesses, like where, you know, the cobbler has no shoes. Yep. The mechanic has the bad car because you're so busy dealing with the client that's in front of you right at this moment that you're not getting extra money from the people who've basically proven that they'll buy your services. You know, the people who've put their hands up and said like, Hey, you're the expert, help me. Or you've already helped me. Like, you know how easy it is to get them to buy off you again. So what we're going to try to delve into over the next, uh, you know, 20, 30 minutes right here is everything that's involved in kind of building a list, what platform you should be doing it on. 
Uh, and then just like the, the pros and cons of all the different methods that it takes to actually build that list. Um, at this point, I guess my mind goes to like, you know, a list is important, but what are the different types of lists that somebody can, can use? Yeah. I think depending upon the business, what types of lists can people use, right? One, if you've been in business for any amount of time, you have a database of past customers or existing customers. It depends if your business is a repeat business or not, right? So that's your list to start from. Who have I already, who has already bought something from me or who have I helped before? Um, what about the leads that you maybe have worked and then those, those didn't turn into closed deals, right? And then uh, the list of potential people, right? Or understanding how to um, generate that list of potential people, right? Those are three things. Who has already bought, who has expressed interest but didn't buy, and who could be a potential next customer for me. Those are three. Those are the three that I will look at first. Hmm. Was your ice pack on your camera? Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. It's too that much uh, too much fire today, huh? It is what it is. Yeah. That's <laughs> it's it's loading up again right here, but I'm just going to switch it over. Sorry, Kyle. Oh shit. Okay, so I'm going to risk it a little bit on this one here. Sorry, I got a little bit off there. No, you're good. Um, so to, to kind of just keep going with what we're saying and don't get too distracted here. Um, so yeah, that we're talking types of lists, right? Yeah, so types of lists, exactly. So it's basically start at the bottom, right? Start with your money. Your money list is people that have already paid for me, right? Or paid uh, you. So your uh, past or existing customers and then people that have expressed interest that didn't um, close, right? So leads that didn't turn into sales. And then also who would be your potential, right? Who are your new or prospective customers? Start there. Mm -hmm. And then do you have kind of a preference on the type of platform that you use? Uh, like no. people think it's just email. But, you know, there's there's Messenger, there's there's a lot of different methods we can kind of use with it. Yeah, I think that's, and that's the power of having the list. The more customer data you have, the better, because then you can move it to different quote unquote platforms, right? So if you have, most important, you're going to want NAP, right? Name, address, phone number, ideally. An address could either be mailing address or email address. NAP is a joke for people that aren't in local, right? Local marketing, okay. that's typically like a citations and something that's mandatory. It's an acronym for name, address, and phone number. But I think that's important. That's the most important because with that, then you can at least be able to then move, right? That list or community onto different platforms. Kevin, you had mentioned like, what is it? Could it should it be this, this, or that? It depends. It depends on your, on your business and it depends on what channels you want to utilize to get your message out there. 